All right, we're, what we're going to be showing here is just a simple play. You know, we're going to talk about two concepts that uh, one is just a, basically a uh, regular stick route, you know, really a double outs, right? We have a go, which is a clear. And on the backside, we can combine it a couple different ways. One way is what we, we do with spacing. And that spacing is going to be a make sure a sit over the ball, which is a six yards. And then we're going to have a wrap short hook, which is at eight yards. Uh, so you're going to get a chance to see that. So these, this is the exact play as I draw it up, speed out, speed out there. Now, the big thing about what's great about this play, it's simple, but it's powerful, right? Because we got to all, all the progression, right? And our first eye fix is all the way to now to the double outs that we're seeing, but we have the ability to come back into a progression based. So we're going either or here. This is an alert. We call this as an alert. An alert for us would be, hey, that jumps to this up high on the progression if they give us this. Now, what's the if? The if is could be press, right? And it's single high safety coverage and it's press man. And we like that matchup, right? So if we like that matchup, we'll take it, right? It also could be from a game plan scenario that we know that the corner, they're playing some version of a, a read corner to the field and he wants to jump that quick out, then we're going to alert it. That is usually we alert that uh, from more or less by game plan. We know we're going into the game doing that kind of thing. The beauty about spacing is this on the backside. It's a pure progression. So we get a chance to go either or. We're going to rock and throw as a quarterback. We're going to go rock and throw to the uh, first out. And then we can hang. We can hang on our back foot or hitch to the stick route. Okay. If we don't like that, we're going to reset to the sit or short hook. And we finish with the spacing or finish with the wide, excuse me. Now that is simple ABC. It's nice and easy for the eye fixes here. As we talked about it, we're getting pressure. We're seeing it. It's a flat top look. Everyone sees it. Now he knows he has to rock and throw. We're rocking throwing to what we said was our quick answer for that week. Now, could he take the, the, the throw here? Yes, he could. But right now we said our right, quick throw, we wanted to get to speedy because we like that matchup. It's cover zero. Let's rock and throw, get the ball off. Let's make sure we put it on his outside uh, shoulder and make sure that he can go and catch. Right? So this is what he's doing. On the back side of it, we're running spacing. He's going to get into a three. What's a three? It's three yards away from the offensive tackle or away from the defensive end so you don't have to get touched. We want to be one yard behind, one and one. And then we want to wrap this. We want to wrap this, and we want to go up to eight yards. And in a perfect landmark, we want to be two yards inside the numbers for that short hook. Okay, so as you can see, it's an easy progression for him at this point in time. He sees it as zero. He rocks and throws it out there for, for that. So if you guys got questions, holler at me. Yeah, what, when are you teaching a hang versus a hitch on the, uh, on the front side? Okay, now on that, especially with the stick, all right, is we're going we're gonna to be on time to the out, outside. So that's a rock and throw. But as we work our vision outside to this, and this is our first right and our it would be one one a so to speak yeah. as we come back to this we want to really hang on our back foot i always start to say you're waiting for your best pitch right if, remember when you're you know you're in little league and you're waiting for that base, be, best pitch and you're hanging back there and you're hanging on your back foot and you're hanging on that now can you slight hitch to that throw yes so that's why when i say yes it's a rock and throw here but let's hang on that hang or a little hitch to this to the stick so that's the verbiage that we use on that so we're not late with it that's the important it depends on the guy uh you know <laughs> hang on it some guys like to take a little pop hitch with it so this this shows us off of cover zero we need to rock and throw and get rid of the ball make sure that we get our left shoulder and our left hip, hip to the target we got to be radical we're throwing to the right so i always say hey we got to do a better job really showing our butt to the line of scrimmage right because now, all of a sudden, our target line, which is our back ankle eye, right, we're on that rope, that tight rope. There's our tight rope, and it's all connected, and that's connected to your target, right? So we, uh, to me, we, we can do a tad bit better job 
of put, facing our butt to the line of scrimmage and radically uh, setting up to that. All right. Here's another version of a dog, so to speak, off of a different coverage. Right. We're getting a chance to see diff some different leverage off of that. Now, all of a sudden, we're in the uh, tight red zone, if you will. And we're still running dog here. But now, as you can see, right, we got a chance to both press man and he's outside leverage. So here we're going to make sure we get a chance to win. He needs to get gone. But the big thing about this, we're still reading as such from here to here. Now, what I'd like to do, yes, he can attack leverage, we say, right? He can attack leverage, which he's outside. But the thing is, is you're never going to let a DB dictate your depth, right? So once you get that, right, we've got to lean on into him because the space between that out and that is not great, right? His split is into a three, right? And his split is on the hash. So once he's chasing technique, he's got to be patient enough now to lean up on in him and then flipper him off. Then that'll go right into the hang. Hang on it, hang on it, hang on it. And as you're hanging on your, your best pitch, you're not going to be late with it. As soon as he turns, turns around, you want to put it in his face, right? You can see that that's the reason why I want you to continue to get your depth. What I would coach Braylon up to do is as you do, you did a phenomenal job and being able to get leverage on his outside shoulder. But now you've got to lean them on up. We never let a DB dictate our depth. Once we do that, then we can flipper them off and expect the ball right into your grill, right? So you can see how he ended up shorting up and now we're almost in the same, in, this, in the same space. So you get a chance to see that. Some good things and some bad things. And I do love how we're ending up rocking and throwing. You can see that we're, we're checking the protection, right? We understand what we're going to do. That was one of our answers. And he's ready to rock and roll, right? He's again sh showing to his right. He's able to get his target line to that uh, to this stick route. And he's doing a great job of throwing it, right? And he's putting it right on him. He's ready to put it on him. He recognizes that. Why? Because, you know, the pressed up mode. The thing is, though, he's got a – the, the receiver – needs to do what? Go up the field and make sure he elongates it a little bit more so we have time to th be able to throw it. He doesn't want to just bounce off the DB once he makes contact because the DB is going to undercut him. All right, here's another shot of it, uh, a little bit different. You get a chance to see some different things that we're doing, right? But now we're going with the spacing over here, and we got our dog here. Now here's a clear, right? We have to clear. What's a clear? It's a force outside release. And the other thing is, hey, you want to make sure, hey, be a little bit tighter, right? We know where his vision is, right? Understand when the ball's coming out, right? We want to run right through his face. You know, and I, a lot of times it says, hey, you can rip his face off. It's like, uh, you know, like that Will Smith movie or that zombie movie. We'll rip his face off. Get through it. Don't let him come down, you know, and do that kind of thing. So I like what Speedy's doing, right? And then here's the stick route. We're getting an elevated Sam. Right, so that's going to be the area that we throw. He puts it right on him and targets him. He target shoots him. That's location and accuracy. He's holding them up in the hole, right? And, that, and to me, that's a pretty good shot, right? He's getting a chance. We end up making an easy completion, getting a chance to be in, in, a, in a second and short area, right? Yeah, I so, love the point, Coach, about, you know, trying to get the eyes of the off defender. Um, you know, you talk running through his face. Like, those are the little details, I think. And one of the things it's funny when when coaches ask, and I'm so glad we're showing this concept. Coaches, when when they you know ask me about videos and stuff we're doing next, they rarely ask me for like, oh, show me like a brand new route concept. They want to know how to teach what they run better, and you know whether it's however you run your sticks concept. Everyone's running some form, right, uh, of the of the clear out route with an out or two outs or whatever it is, um, you know, and and that level of details. I think the thing coaches can take from this is, hey, it's not just you're running. You know, you're not just running a fade. You're not just running outside release, right? We want you running this clear a certain way that's going to allow the other guys in the concept to be successful when you don't get your number called. I think that's that's a great point. Yeah, and, and because that's, to me, competing through the down, right? We always talk about competing through the down, and you do it in various ways. And how are you going to compete without the ball? I mean, that speaks volumes, right? You know, what you do speaks so loudly, I can't hear you. So, I mean, it's going to show up on film to see what they're doing, and it speaks to their level of teammates. Not a bad job on the late release. We'd rather, you know, especially, you know, we I want to see that domino fall, so to speak, and he's slightly behind it. We want to be able to – because what are we reading first? We're, we're honestly reading him, 
you know, and why he's not taking that is because of this, right? His vision on there coming down. And on the back side, we have our spacing once again, and we know our landmarks off the spacing. We know we're going to be six yards old over the ball, and it's an absolute. What do we call an absolute? Meaning that once he gets there, as he, as he gets there, he's going to sit there. He has no adjustment, right? What we'd like to him to be able to do is turn his eyes and body in one piece. Once he sticks that foot in the ground, right, all of a sudden we don't want his eyes to bleed out of it, right? We want to make sure that he gets there, he sticks his foot in the ground, then he turns his and then his eyes and body in one piece, right? So here it is, right? We don't. I would talk to uh, Mr. Jalen say, listen, hey, can we just stick that foot in the ground? Don't bleed your eyes. Now let's turn our eyes and body in one piece. That's all we need to do. You have all the time in the world, right? Because we're not getting to you until later. We're reading this either or, and then we're resetting to you. And so you have time. You don't want to bring your eyes too fast because that's going to attract people. Don't attract people. You don't want that. You want to be able to sit there and then now I'm open. Show me your, me your hands. And then once you get the ball on this sit route, wherever the ball is placed on your location, your right shoulder or left shoulder, now you're going to turn through your shadow and get up the field right, not just now, but right now. You want to be able to turn and have a tight turn and go. All right. So here's an alert. You're getting a chance to see an alert. That's why the footwork's a little bit different, right? And this this is an alert that we miss, and I put this on tape to make a point for really for me because of the intent and the coaching that didn't go on that could have been better, you know, because we wanted to be able to understand that, yes, we know on this, they're reading off of this, and he goes to the flat, he's going to come here, and then he's going to push to one, right? Now, we have to read his depth, eyes, and leverage, and we have to get our eyes through that funnel and make sure we see that body language. What's his depth? What's his, where's his hips, right? Those are the things. What's his intention, right? Depth, width, and hips. Now I know where his width, he's inside the numbers. We ended up being able to call it from the middle of the field. I couldn't barely get the play out, right? So then we get a chance to get a shot there. And there is a touchdown that is missed and why it was thrown out of bounds, which is one of those things never ever in football that you're never, ever going to complete a ball that's thrown out of bounds. Never. I've never seen that. Right. <laughs> is because I didn't do a good enough job of explaining the intent, but really his eye fix of understanding, yes, you need to be here. You don't really have to worry about there because that's going to take care of itself. The thing that's going to unlock this play for you is the vision of understanding this. If he ran over there, you weren't going to get the alert. We alerted this uh, before, right? It wasn't that we just alerted it during the pre-snap uh, or pre-snap play, he knew we were going to do this. So we could have done a better job as a coach because, as you can see, take a look at that, take a look at their expression. You know, that, that comes from understanding the play and understanding all that, right? And we, or myself, didn't do a good enough job of explaining the eye fix a lot better because he didn't really see him afterwards and so he was nervous about him playing over the top so he threw it all the way out there so critical so even those things that so we look at it and say what was wrong on that play well what was wrong on the play that critical analysis was the way it was installed through his eye fixes where he didn't see it and how was that shown or how was that unveiled and discovered it was discovered by having that conversation to see what he was and having that trust going back and forth and me to be able to say, you know something, I missed it. I missed it. You didn't, I missed it. And then to be able to have that, have that same candor in front of the, uh, in front of the football team, you know, and I think that's important that builds trust. Right. And because we knew what we wanted. So those are the little things that we look at things that I think we can get a lot better at, not only from the spacing and the dog and understanding where the landmarks are, understanding what we want, uh, and you saw the good, the bad, the great, and, of course, you finally saw a little bit of the ugly. Uh, but all those things, what did we do, and wh what I think is most important is not only did we unveil that, but did we actually learn from that? What did we learn from that, not only from, uh, from me as a coach, but as a, as a unit and, an and also as an individual player? Uh, and I think, you know, from that, I'm, I guarantee that's not going to happen again.
Yeah, that's awesome, Coach. And again, I think the level of detail, you know, especially when you're looking at a concept that you want to get a lot of versatility out of, you want to be able to use in different situations, you have to be ready to use it in those different situations, right? Whether it's, you know, second and short to medium and you think you're going to get pressure so you love the the man-to-man -man matchup or whether it's on first down you're trying to get ahead of the sticks or you know a couple of those clips you're starting to get in the red zone um you know when you want that versatility out of concept i think the details is what allows you to to get the most out of it and you know the the level of detail there was amazing uh, you know thanks so much for for making the time to talk to us you know i know we've been on this now for almost two hours and uh you know it's been really dense detail the whole time i think our our viewers are going to get a ton out of it. So really appreciate it, coach. Thanks, Brayden, for, for, you know, helping me set this up and helping me run this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to get this out to everybody because I think, you know, what from the first two minutes of this conversation right through the end, there's, there's a ton of value there. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I love the game of football and being able to be up here and raising my family in Canada uh, here in, in the Hamilton area has been a tremendous honor. We're steeped in the community. And to be able to help out uh, all the all the coaches, and then specifically also uh, the, the the Canadian football coaches, all the way from wherever wherever it starts from six to eight to all the way up uh, through you know when they're 22 and 24, 25, uh, I'm certainly willing to do it. And and the game has given uh, myself individually and collectively for my family so much. And so it's it's my duty to uh, share and help and love to do it. And whenever we do it again, uh, like I said, I, I, I only hope to get a cigar and we'll, we'll start doing it and get after it a little bit. So I thank you.